What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out how Clash at the Castle 2022 shaped the new WWE. Um, I want to give a shout out to Super Kick Studios. It's been a minute since I've checked out one of his uh, uh videos on his channel, so I'm gonna link the original video down below. He he definitely does some good retrospectives of certain pay per views or WWE or wrestling events in general so definitely go check them out like i said link in the original video down below but i definitely wanted to check this out i think someone has sent this to me on twitter since clash at the castle is this weekend it only makes sense that we talk about the very first clash at the castle and how good of a, a ple uh, or pay-per-view but you know wwe calls them ple's now how good good of an event it was and it kind of gave you the sense of we're in a new era in wwe and it's a really good memorable show and i do think clash at the castle this year is going to be memorable as well how storylines may play out i'm very interested to see how this show is going to uh progress and how it's going to end so we could have another memorable clash at the castle this year so i definitely wanted to check this out to go back down memory lane so this should be a good one appreciate all love support you guys have shown on the channel and let's see what super kid studios has to talk about when it relates to the og clash at the castle when Clash at the Castle 2022 came to a close, WWE fans were saying that what they had just witnessed was pound for pound one of the best pay-per-views in a long, long time. A first-time event that punched way above its weight class and went beyond just an experiment wedged into the WWE calendar. This show gave off the same big time feel as a major event like WrestleMania or yeah. SummerSlam thanks to a great card meshed with unpredictability, meshed with one of the best crowds we had seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. You were given the matches, you were given debuts, heel turns, the show didn't overstay its welcome, but looking back at it a few years down the line, it's very easy to make out that this show really defined today's WWE. Yeah. So what made it such a game changer? Well, first things first, this was officially the start to the Triple H pay-per-view era and i know we had summerslam a month before this and that show was great but as far as him having his own vision for what he wanted as a show this was it the previous card he inherited from vince mm -hmm. also somewhat forgotten is this was the beginning of the international pay-per-view tour for the wwe up until Clash at the Castle, it had been the same loop of North America and Saudi for WWE pay-per-views, with the mm -hmm. last time the company went out of that pattern being October of 2018 when they went to Australia. Yeah. This was the first step into resetting and redefining what shows outside of North America could look like. Maybe if this show doesn't do the numbers it does, doesn't show that there is money to be made elsewhere, the company... Yeah, I, I, he makes a very good point. This is kind of the birth of WWE actually going back outside the country and not in just like the you know the european tours that they do and stuff like that i'm talking about actually televising these events and making these these ple's a a thing in other countries and now we're seeing that you know we're seeing that on a regular basis and i love it i i hope they go back to Lyon, france again next year for another pay-per-view it doesn't even have to be backlash because to be honest with you the past two backlashes have been fantastic be not only because the card was you know you know decent or you know the card was good some good wrestling it's the crowd that made those atmospheres so great puerto rico showed out last year at backlash this year leon french showed out like so you know it they're they're doing really great things i do think uh money in the bank this year is gonna be in toronto so i i think they're gonna have a good showing i think uh bash in berlin uh, that's in germany i think that's going to be a good showing and obviously clash at the castle this year is going to be another good showing in the sense of the fans being excited it's going to give that 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 wrestlemania excitement feel because for these folks wherever part of the world they're at it's wrestlemania for them because they don't get to see this often so he does have a point this is kind of the birth of this international wwe ple tour run 
company doesn't take the risk and continue to run these new markets. Chances are you can kiss backlash in France goodbye, see you later to Money in the Bank from London, or any other crazy crowd we've had in the past little bit because this laid the groundwork for untapped markets, especially in recent times. Hitting the company with a reality check to the point where we now have Clash at the Castle 2 in Scotland, Backlash in France, Bash in Berlin, the list goes on and on. So those are two huge talking points and I haven't even gotten into the actual show which was a classic. Yeah. 60,000 people packed Principality Stadium in Cardiff for the first stadium show in the UK in 30 years. At the end of the show was the chance to see what would have been one of the biggest championship wins in the company's history. Drew McIntyre, the son of Scotland, the UK's own one-on-one -on -one against the head of the table winner take all and if you want to talk about aura this match had it in spades I feel like because Roman's absurd body of work people forget that Drew McIntyre carried the pandemic era for a mm -hmm. period of time weekly he showed up to work was a complete horse for the company and during this time he also met Roman Reigns champion versus champion but he couldn't get the job done Drew was walking in, no title. Meanwhile, Roman had reached 734 days up until that point, and going in, WWE made Drew McIntyre look like an absolute machine. Someone who would endure all the pain, someone who would fight the bloodline on his own, fight one on eight if he had to, fight until he did what he wanted to do, and that was take it all away from Roman Reigns. Finally get his moment in front of a packed house, finally put his hands on the world title, and have mm -hmm. the world cheering behind him. And you you guys all know the story of Drew McIntyre, a rise and fall and rise again that I'm not going to go through. Having home field advantage, you started to wonder, is this the night where the rain ends? What made things even more fun was all the theatrics that added mm -hmm. to this match. Right as Drew was about to make his entrance, poetically played Broken Dream showing Drew's entire career. And even though he didn't properly walk out to it, even though it was just a prelude, that nervous energy and anticipation started to build. Roman on the other side coming out with no Usos and no Paul Heyman. Usos because of Jimmy's DUI and Heyman because he was selling getting put through an announce table by Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Roman was legitimately walking into a war zone. It felt like if Drew lost, Cardiff was legitimately going to start a riot. <laughs> These two for 30 minutes. Here's the thing. I, I just think, I just, I have a feeling they're going to repeat the same. I Would I be upset if Drew won at this year's Clash of the Castle? Of course not. But I just don't see him being a transitional champion to only hold the championship to maybe SummerSlam because I just feel like whoever's going to hold it, they're most likely going to lose it, lose to Gunther at SummerSlam. It, 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 I think Gunther's going to have his crowning moment. So that's why I, I don't think that's the case. I do think it's going to be a situation where maybe, I don't know, may, maybe they do it, but I just... The signs are all pointing to, once again, Drew coming up short, but this time because of CM Punk. So we'll see how things play out. Who knows? Minutes gave us a wrestling clinic infused with heart pounding near falls, the shenanigans of an attempted money in the bank cash in from Theory, two of WWE's biggest studs going pound for pound Great match. and destroying Fantastic each match. other, having every single move in the other's arsenal scouted, all while Drew McIntyre had all of Cardiff on the edge of their seats every time he made the pinfall because you never knew when this thing could end. And then it looked like the end was in yep. fact here. Drew McIntyre claymored Roman Reigns into 2047, and just <laughs> as he's about to get the three, Such a, a game-changing debut. A, a match, debut bro. that would add another member to the bloodline. Solo Sokoa was enough to distract Drew and give Roman the win and break everyone's heart. I remember so many of us thought that this mm -hmm. was the perfect night to do it. This should have been Drew's crowning moment, but it wasn't his time just yet. Now, a few years later, Drew has the chance to do it all over again, but this time end up the victor. In a weird way, what's so perfect about this is now Drew McIntyre's challenging for the World Heavyweight Championship, and the whole character transformation that he went through started because he was annoyed with Cody yeah. bringing over a former member of the Bloodline. This man hated the Bloodline because they cost him his biggest moment, and now it and This is why I say it looks poetic, it looks like he's gonna finally get his moment, but this time is because of his hatred for CM Punk. This is what's going to cause this. 
his hatred for CM Punk, his constant shit talking of CM Punk is going to cost him because CM Punk has made it very clear. I'm going to make your life a living hell. As long as I'm on the shelf, I'm going to make sure you don't win the championship. This is why I like this dynamic because it looks like everything is set up for him to win. But ultimately, his hatred for CM Punk and the shit talking he continuously keeps doing is going to cost him. That's what I think it is. Could possibly lead to an even bigger moment. Big Picture Solo's debut is one of the moments that's going to be replayed for years and years to come. And looking back at how the company immediately put a spotlight on his arrival, plus what's going on with WWE programming today, that makes it all the more important in the overall lure of this show. And it's crazy how things work out for everyone. Drew McIntyre has a chance to do it all over again, but this time literally in his home country. They can make amends for Drew McIntyre singing to end the show after the biggest loss yeah, of his career that was like kind of a, imagine yeah. scotland going mental if he springs off the rope and claymore's priest into next year pins and then wins solo is now undergoing a character transformation with his own version of the bloodline and it's starting to build to the return of roman who went through four years as a villain only for his future return to be one of the most awaited in a mm -hmm. long long time so what happened to close the night holds major significance, but the one thing this night also did was yeah. rebooted what it meant to be the Intercontinental Champion. Ooh, Seriously, for years match, the company bro. had led you to believe that holding this championship came with prestige, that this was the workhorse's title, that this championship was the pathway into the main event scene. But let's be honest, no matter how much they gassed it up, that simply wasn't true. The Intercontinental Championship scene had some peaks here and there but it was a shell of what it once was so much so that clash at the castle was the first time since wrestlemania 37 that this championship was defended on pay-per-view that's a span of 15 pay-per-views and that's you're led wild. to believe that this title actually means something but on this night the championship was reborn and the guys who gave it new life Gunther and Sheamus. Mm -hmm. Sheamus who in his rookie year had won the WWE Championship and now was looking to complete the Grand Slam. And speaking of rookie years on the main roster, underline main roster WWE, when we talk about them it's the same culprits. Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, but Gunther's was really strong. He came up from NXT and quickly dominated winning the Intercontinental Championship two months into his run. And remember when Gunther rocked up the worry we all had that this would be another fun by Vince McMahon, you were just waiting for the moment where something stupid happened. The moment Vince- I was so scared. I mean, we were scared with the name change and everything. I, I was one of those people. I was scared. But surprisingly, Vince didn't ruin him. It's so one thing we can say. He kept him strong. And I think it also plays into the fact that Gunther did change his, you know, his physical look. And I think that's what Vince wanted. Uh, for him to change his physical look, and he did. He did. He changed his physical look. Looks like he's in the best shape in the, of his career. And I think Vince kind of appreciated that hard work. So he didn't bury him. He kept him looking strong. And Gunther right now, like I said, he won King of the Ring in the controversy fast, controversial fashion, fashion. And he's going to end up winning at SummerSlam, whoever he faces. I, I do still think it's going to be Damian Priest. I do feel like it's going to be Damian Priest. I mean, if it is Drew, that's cool, but it's just going to suck because Drew would literally just be dropping the championship again. That's why I say I think it would be better because Damian Priest, either way, he's winning the World Heavyweight Championship and he's going to hold it for a while. Simple as that repackaged him as Grizzly Gunther, made him come out wearing a robe to resemble a bear with a skinned bear head on it. All this while he pranced down to some horrible Def Rebel song that probably went like this. Ring General, Ring General, Bear Noise. Ring General, Ring General, Bear Noise. Ring General. We all knew it was a matter of time until Gunther became another one that got away. Even the Intercontinental Championship reign didn't become what it was until this night. 
Both guys had promised to break each other until there was simply nothing left of the other. As Gunther entered, Giovanni Vinci was put back in Imperium so the band was back together. The crowd continued to be absolutely electric for this like it was a football match and Sheamus was the home team. As so the bell clear, rang, bro. it was chaos all around Gunther and Sheamus with the other members of their groups brawling and they don't lay a hand on each other until the bell rings. But once that bell rings, Such you get one of match. the most physical matchups ever. They recently just had a good match on Monday Night Raw too. Like these these guys, they just they work well in the ring together. These two have the weirdest chop and forearm kink because that's what a lot of this match is made out of. It wasn't anything fancy. It was hard hitting strikes. It was moves that are very commonplace within a normal wrestling match. But it's the violence that these two delivered yeah. those moves with. The whole psychology of the match was that Sheamus would not surrender. No matter how red his mm -hmm. chest got, no matter how much punishment he took, no matter how much Gunther drained him, he was not going to say die. Even the match, finish bro. was brilliant. Sheamus went for the brogue, but his back gave out after mm -hmm. taking so much punishment. Gunther went to hit a power bomb, but he was barely able to deliver it, showing that he was dead on the other side as well. One final lariat, that's it. It was like the final bullet in a gunfight getting the kill. Whoever had just one more would take it, and that's exactly what happened. Such a Even in match, defeat, bro. Sheamus got the standing O, and this was the match that really put Gunther's reign on the map. Now look at him, King of the Ring winner having given the Intercontinental Championship a rebirth that was much needed and now on his way to challenging for the World Championship. His development has been great, Fantastic. but if you want to talk about development curves, look at this guy. What does this guy- This bro, if you want to be honest, he has a great point. This pay-per-view, this PLE literally changed the landscape of WWE. This heel turn was so damn good and it's- I mean, look at the guy. He's getting love from, you know, supposedly Rhea Ripley and now Liv Morgan. And my man's legitimately married and one of the hate, most hated wrestlers in wrestling right now in a good way. This, this PLE did wonders for a lot of people, bro. It changed the landscape of WWE. This guy screamed to you. That's right. Nothing. Literally, there was nothing there. He was generic as could be, bland, boring, mm -hmm. vanilla, no direction aside from, hey guys, I'm Rey Mysterio's Mysterio kid. Yeah. We really started to think that this guy is not going to pull things together. He just needed that one change. He needed something. He needed something to latch onto that would make Dominic Mysterio his own entity. And on this night, we yeah. finally got it. So Edge had returned at SummerSlam since he was feuding with the Judgment Day to get the assist in Ray and Dom's match and now Ray wanted to get even more even with the Judgment Day and he chose Edge as his partner for the match. After all it was Edge who created the Judgment Day then had his group taken over by the goth kids. This man really <laughs> cut his hair to look like an elementary school teacher only to be in the group for like a month. So Ray wanted revenge on the Judgment Day, chose Edge as his partner and that made Dom very jealous. He wasn't chosen by his dad, but in this, he met his mom. And this is when Rhea was just tormenting this guy. And he loved it. <laughs> Mommy, who took him to the back and showed him just what her brutality really is. Make of that whatever you want. So you knew that Dom was going to turn on Edge at one point or another. We'll cross that bridge very quickly here in a sec. But the Cardiff crowd absolutely lost it for Edge Generico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm proud of that one, please. Please don't hate me. They were singing Metalingus, they were having fun, and this tag team match was an absolute blast like most things on this show. And after Ray and Edge won, Dom came into the ring to celebrate. Kicked Edge right in the Genericos, and the crowd lost it. Ooh, Dom damn, had officially bro. turned heel, and now you're thinking, alright, this is gonna get stretched out, and Ray's gonna do the whole, Oh, why, son? Why did you do that to Edge? He, he's <laughs> familiar. But instead, Dominic Mysterio looks at his dad and delivers a clothesline oh from hell God. so good it would make JBL forget Such that he hates Mexicans. <laughs> and from that moment there, nothing was ever this the same so for Dominic. Good, after bro. everything he had done for him, after literally winning great. his custody in a ladder match, 
that's how he repaid him. The crowd went berserk for this turn, and at this moment, he found a connection with the crowd, and he hasn't lost it since. Nope. Eventually, Dom joined the Judgment Day and committed felonies so vicious I can't talk about them on this channel. <laughs> now, every arena he goes into, he can't even speak without being drowned out by booze, becoming the most despicable, nasty, conniving sleazeball in the company, and it's beautiful. Now he's poised to do big things, and if you tell me that Dom Mysterio is going to be a future world champion, I'm going to tell you, of course he is. In 2022, I would have had some serious, serious mm -hmm. concerns. Speaking of concern, it seems like Seth and, Rollins... And it works because, I mean, Money in the Bank's right around the corner. You can do something with him there. You could. He's going to be a champion. Maybe, I don't know when, but he would be... I could see him being a... The perfect chicken shit heel champion. And he could have a, a decent title reign. Only be and it works because you you want to see him lose. I don't know if it's gonna happen anytime soon. I'm not putting that out there, but I could see it possibly working because there's nothing better than a chicken shit heel that's your champion. Because people are gonna pay top dollar just to see this guy get beat up. But we'll see if it does happen, though. Rollins had that for Riddle back in 2022, and mainly concern for his marriage. He told him that he doesn't have a wife anymore, oh, yeah, and his this, kids yeah. don't want to see him anymore. This, this was, was delivered with venom behind it, was, and you could tell that Rollins was... This was such a good program. Like, the lead-up to it, even though the match was okay for the most part, the lead up to it the promo packages to this was fucking fire bro just waiting to say this we had seth rollins and matt riddle in an extremely competitive match seth's entrance was amazing as yeah, always the match was okay uh, uh, i'm not gonna sit up here and say it wasn't it was it was a fine match for sure in my opinion it you know the what was being said you know could have been a little bit more intense, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I'm not going to sit up here and say it was bad by any means. Boys, the finish came when Rollins egged on Riddle, making fun of his divorce and family, and that was ultimately Riddle's undoing as he nearly got DQ'd before Rollins hit a middle rope curb stomp to take the win. We saw damage control in their earliest stages a little while after the group formed at SummerSlam. Liv and Shayna was fine for what it was. All in all, this night was outstanding, but why this matters is because of everything attached to this show. This being the flame that ignited international pay-per-views, Dominic's heel turn, the resurgence of the Intercontinental Championship, Solo Sokoa's main roster debut, Triple H's first true pay-per-view, it's crazy how some people have progressed. Gunther is now on his way to challenging for a world title. Drew McIntyre's recent performance is a construct of what happened at this pay-per-view the last time. Mm -hmm. Io Sky has become Miss Money in the Bank and a woman's champion since. The list goes on and on. Drew versus Roman was one of the most hyped and most unpredictable matches in a long while. A spectacular crowd, a great night of entertainment, big matches, entrances, you name it. All this with Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton on the shelf, no Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. they didn't have any nostalgia pops, they didn't need to pop in any part timers to sell this show, this show was just brilliant from top to bottom. Now WWE will present Clash at the Castle 2 from Scotland and it has the potential to best the first one. Mm -hmm. Drew McIntyre now on his actual home turf going for the world championship, Styles and Rhodes in an I Quit mm -hmm. match, Sammy and good. Gable in what might top Gunther and Sheamus yeah, as far as a pound for pound championship match. Really we have WrestleMania, too. we have SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, Survivor Series, the pillars of WWE's pay-per-view calendar, but now they have the chance to turn Clash at the Castle into its own entity to make it as big or close to it as they can to those shows. But for now, the first version remains not only one of the best rewatches from point A to point B, but one of the most significant shows in WWE history. Hey man, I'm gonna go ahead and give homie a like here because his videos are always good. I love his retrospective takes on pay-per-views and you know, you know, wrestlers and stuff like that in WWE or in any company, but you know, he primarily does talk about WWE. Definitely go ahead and give it a like. Y'all subscribe to Superkick Studios. I have been for a while now. Definitely go show him some love. I'm gonna link down the original video. He has some other videos I hadn't checked out. I didn't plan on doing a reaction to, but I'll probably check them out off camera. Go show him some love, man. This is this just got me even more hype for Clash at the Castle this year. I cannot wait for Saturday 
it's gonna be fun i'm gonna have a great time live streaming with you guys clash at the castle man it's it's it, it, i like what they did here that they're not running it into the ground we haven't had it obviously since 2022 it's been two years later we're getting it again it should definitely be a staple every few years you get a clash at the castle this was great the first one was great i think the second one may even be better we may even have something better i i don't know what to say but i'm excited and that is good to say i will say this about wwe they bring some excitement to the ple's there's something that you can sink your teeth into with these ple's going forward and clash of the castle should be a really good one so comment down below let me know what was your favorite match from clash at the castle 2022 i know a lot of you guys are going to say that gunther versus sheamus match it's still one of the best intercontinental championship matches bro it's so fucking good but that roman and drew match was so good too man y'all let me know what was your favorite match from the first clash at the castle but i appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel roads on 50k and i'm still in speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace